I'm going to demonstrate the proper casting technique for a standard Ritchie brace using the STS ankle length casting sock. The STS product offers numerous advantages over traditional plaster of Paris casting, but it requires a few setup steps that I'm, I'm about to demonstrate prior to putting on the sock itself. First of all, the patient, as mentioned earlier, has to be positioned comfortably on the examination chair and it's recommended that a plastic uh, trash can liner or plastic drape be placed over the chair to protect from the uh, fiberglass cast material. We always mark the medial and lateral malleolus as well as the first and fifth metatarsophalangeal joints prior to casting for any of the Ritchie Brace products. In the case of the STS casting sock, none of these markings will transfer to the sock until the end of the cast process, which we will demonstrate at the conclusion of this tape. The STS sock is available in three sizes, color-coded small, medium, and large. In this case, our patient uh, fits a medium sock, and that happens to cover most of the foot sizes of the typical patient population. Before putting the sock on, there are a few steps that are necessary. The first is the application of a cutting strip, which is laid over the top of the foot and the front of the leg. The strip itself is positioned along the shaft of the second metatarsal, starting about two inches behind the second toe. Holding the foot slightly dorsiflex, the strip passes along the top of the foot and along the anterior crest of the tibia. It is secured to the leg with paper tape applied in about three different locations to the top of the foot and anterior part of the ankle. Make sure that the tape doesn't cross over your skin markings. The second application is the cutting channel. It's laid right on top of the cutting strip just behind the distal edge of the strip, and it's secured again with paper tape, this time applied in a slightly different location than the tape used for the cutting strip. Slightly different location so that when you pull the cutting channel out, it doesn't pull the cutting strip with it. So now we're ready to go. The final essential ingredient is the bag. This plastic bag protects the skin of the patient from the fiberglass material. For the same reason, the practitioner should wear gloves, must wear gloves, to protect your own skin. The bag is slid over the foot and up onto the leg, and now it will prevent the transfer of the skin markings to the cast. And we'll show you how to deal with that later. We've selected size medium. Once we open the bag, we notice that the sock itself is rolled in plastic, which must be removed. The sock itself has a color-coded toe seam corresponding with the size. Again, blue is corresponding to size medium. There is actually a heel portion and a top line of the sock. It's recommended that the sock be gathered from the top to the toe, orienting the toe seam to the top of the foot. And then the sock is dipped into water. Uh, room temperature is recommended, giving you time to mold it properly to the foot. Again, holding the sock gathered, we slide the sock up over the foot orient the heel portion properly. And as we slide it on, we begin molding, starting at the top and moving into the arch. While the sock is still uh, wet and hasn't cured, we recommend you open a small opening in the sock at the top of the channel using scissors. Now we begin molding. Initially the sock is somewhat tacky, but as we mold around the malleoli and along the cutting channel and into the arch, the sock begins to become more slippery and it's easier to mold. 
the malleoli, the cutting channel, and the arch of the foot are critical in the molding process. When you feel the sock begin to get warm, it means it's starting to cure. And at this point, the patient is asked to relax their foot. The leg drops back to the table. We position subtalar neutral. We lift the fourth and fifth toes, locking the mid-tarsal joint. And then we gently push down on the first ray, removing any forefoot supinatus. The foot is now locked in a neutral position of the subtalar joint, fully locked and pronated mid-tarsal joint, and the first ray is plantar flex gently to end range of motion. Once the sock has cured, we're going to go ahead and mark the medial and lateral malleolus. Now this is the difference between the fiberglass technique and the plaster technique. We have to palpate through the outside of the sock and find that point of the distal tip of the medial malleolus and transfer a blue dot or with a felt pin to the exterior surface of the STS sock. And then we're going to transfer a dot at the distal tip of the lateral malleolus palpating through the outside of the sock, starting under the calcaneus, moving up. Here is that distal most tip of the lateral malleolus, and we're going to mark it. Now we're ready to cut off the sock. In order to do so, you grab the cutting channel and you pull out straight through the top of the cast. There is still a channel opening that has been now created through the top of the fiberglass that will allow you to safely cut through the top of the cast and remove the sock. These scissors are provided to remove the cast. Another easier technique is to use this letter opener which slips in under the sock and following the channel you simply cut right up the front of the leg and you're ready to remove the sock. The advantage of the STS sock is that you can easily open it up as much as necessary and slide it off the leg without distorting the cast. The cast easily is brought back together, held together with a rubber band, and the anatomy has been preserved. What I'm going to do now is pull the bag out of the inside of the cast now that the cast has cured. And I'm going to transfer these skin markings to the inside of the cast, which is much more accurate. In order to do that, just as we do with plaster, we're going to just remark our skin markings with fresh ink, including that medial and lateral tip of the malleolus. And we're going to just simply open this cast up slide it back on the foot and push in, pushing the cast against the malleoli and then pulling it back off and as you can see both medial and lateral now the outline of the malleolus medial and lateral transfer to the inside of the cast, accurately transferring the anatomy and the markers where the lab needs to see it. This is brought back together, a rubber band is placed on it, and it's ready to ship to the lab. It's a good strong cast, it accurately captures the uh, anatomy, uh, and it's a much cleaner process than plaster of Paris.